as a small group of men and boys prepare for Friday prayers in Kagamuga, Western Highlands. A local imam makes a Muslim call to prayer at midday on Friday. The Arabic language sounds very foreign here. In fact, this is one of the few Islamic communities in the Western Highlands finding its way through a country that describes itself as predominantly Christian. Inside, the men and boys line up in front as the prayers begin. Uh, this is the most humblest way, and we've, this is the way we follow all the prophets. They've been praying like this. Prophet Isa, Jesus, Al-Islam, peace be upon him. Prophet Moses, Al-Islam, peace be upon Moses. Prophet Muhammad, Al-Islam, peace be upon him. They all pray, pray the same way we are praying. The women, as per Islamic teachings, are in another room, still in the small mosque. 2014, I started building this mosque. I was in school. I was reading my books. I was building this mosque. I was starting to Now I was in the Mangi camp, the community line camp. This is a small group struggling to find its place in both Papua New Guinea and in the global Islamic community of 2.4 billion Muslims around the world. Ahmad Didat used to be known as Nixon. About 10 years ago, he converted to Islam after three years of prior travel and intense study. Some people travel to long Jaipura, around the Papua region of Jaipura, around four months, routes from place to place, around all of Indonesia. This is what about me and him. I planted something was the way of Islam. How how long I looked him, I created properly five daily prayers, commandment where last seal block of the Prophet Muhammad, where Muhammad Prophet blow me blow Muslim. I want him pass in a lifestyle blow him, I want him all belief. Soon after Didat converted to Islam. His whole family, including his mother and father, converted as well. The family adopted Islamic religious practices, Arabic names, Middle Eastern style clothing, and Didat began teaching a small group of children in Arabic, a language that he had also begun to learn himself. Reading Quran is everything in style Arabic, because we keep Arabic as an original language, so. While translating to English, a um, man can uh, subtract the medicine because uh, Arabic grammar standard is very deep. He had alphabet, blame, all the stuff. After we complete the alphabet, we will go read him again. We start teaching stuff. We teach him again. Long. I was a boy, girl, they are running this, that, and we will put him in, join together. So after all, we will read him fully Arabic, and we will speak him Arabic. Islam is a controversial subject in Papua New Guinea. For many people professing to be Christians, at least by religious groupings, Islam is viewed with a lot of suspicion. Over 40 years, many more have tended to judge the religion based largely on how international media links the religion to global terrorism. And this has triggered the ongoing discrimination against this small group of Muslims in Mount Hagen. Islam is relatively new to Papua New Guinea. In 1982, the Papua New Guinea government under Sir Julius Chan gave permission for a mosque to be built in Port Moresby. It was the start of a 30-year journey that resulted in the conversion of more than 6,000 Papua New Guineans to Islam. As someone that's converted to Islam, uh, there's still a lot of misconceptions about Islam in Papua New Guinea. As a Papua New Guinean, what would be your message to them about their, their thoughts about Islam? It is the interpretation of the book that is confusing. It's not the people. If we teach them, if we talk together, if we come together and talk about it together, they will all understand. These people here, they were Christians. But today they think like uh, they were never Christians. I was a Christian, but I don't think I, I don't think like I was a Christian. 
because the book is book, the holy book, the, I mean the book, the Bible, and the Quran, they are the same. But it's how people are interpreting it that we, don't, we think it's wrong. At the Hohola Islamic Center, the Grand Imam of Port Moresby, Ibrahim Aziz, who has been in the country for more than 30 years, says it's been an interesting three decades for PNG's Islamic community. I thankful to Allah Almighty God. I've been here, alhamdulillah, for 30 years. I came here in 1989. When I came here, there are a few Papua New Guineans became Muslim, about, like I say, about 12. So, but by the grace of God, they are now Muslim. They are everywhere in the every corner of Papua New Guinea. Because why? Islam is a final message of God to all mankind. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallam, peace be upon him, is the last prophet of God to all mankind. So this, the Quran, our Quran, is the last testament of the God sent down, Almighty Allah sent down. And from this Prophet Muhammad Sallam, Almighty God sent him to the all human being. Because Allah says, Wama ar sainaka illa rahmatan li alameen. You Prophet Muhammad we did not send you only to be a mercy for the all universe. So that's why Islam is the last one. Imam Ibrahim leaves at the end of the year. Over the last 30 years, much of his work has been focused on bridging the gaps between Islamic communities and those around them. God is our sustainer. God is the one, is the owner. Anybody can die at any time. We believe like Judaism and Christianity, Islam is a monotheistic Abrahamic religion. In other words, Muslims also believe that there is one God and according to tradition, they trace the roots of their religion to the time of Abraham, the same Abraham mentioned in both the Christian and Jewish writings. We believe in, in one God. We Muslims, we believe in angels. They call it in Arabic, Al-Malaika. We Muslims, we believe in all books. God sent down, we believe in them. We Muslims, number four, we Muslims, we believe in all messengers. We are not anti-Christ, we are not anti-Moses, we are not anti-Abraham. We are not anti noir We follow all of them. The way they did, we did the same. And we Muslims, we believe, with number five, we believe in the day of judgment. This world is like a market. It's not, it's a temporary. We will go, we, or what we do in this world, we will be reward on the day of judgment. Christians and Muslims differ on fundamental teachings. Where a majority of Christians accept the Trinity, Muslims believe in the singularity of God. What usually triggers religious disputes and intolerance is the Muslim view that Jesus, according to Islamic tradition, is one of the many important prophets of God. People have got used to me, they understand it, and those who are not very understanding, they come and I say, you come and I will talk together, come to my place, there is no, the fence is there to keep the dogs out, you can jump over it if you want to come, but come and we talk, and you'll understand Islam. Back at the Kagamuga Mosque, Imam Ahmad Didat tells me about the plans he has for this small Islamic center. There will be a school and maybe a bigger mosque in future.